Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another Friday. Funny how the week goes by, months go by. The years disappeared quickly, actually, <laughs> in this mad world that we're living in at the moment. Uh, so good morning to everyone. As usual, if you're there, do say a hello in the comments so that I can wave at you or poke your tongue out or anything, really, <laughs> depending on how the mood takes me. It's one of those days. <laughs> good morning, Eva. Uh, what have we got today? Oh, sunshine today and clear skies. Very, very chilly in the southeast of England today. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Rachel. Uh, Maria, it's a bit chilly. Yep, it is a bit chilly this morning, but nice and fresh. That's what we like. Good morning, Eve. Good morning, Sylvie. Good morning, Sue. Hello, love scarf. Thank you. I have got quite a lot of scarves. <laughs> it's that time of the year now, really. Good morning, Emma. Uh, you look cold. No, I am actually quite warm now. <laughs> Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, Angela. Yeah, it is fairly chilly today where I am. Um, and, you yeah, know, the heating's on at the moment. It comes on in the mornings, but it'll go off in a bit. Uh, good morning, Christine. Love your scarf. How did you fasten it on? Oh, it's just thrown round and then it's pinned with a brooch. Got a big brooch on. Big 90, 1980s brooch. Never, ever left the 1980s. <laughs> and never want to. So there. <laughs> I have got quite a few scarves and bits and pieces. They are quite handy. Um, good morning, everyone. Wow, lots of lovely people again this morning. Hello, hello, hello. Um, this morning, oh, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Xenia. Uh, Karen, uh, cold here, going to walk the dogs to revive me later. Yeah, it, it will definitely, yeah, we've got to walk Eric later as well. It'll definitely be a pickup. <laughs> Maria, I hope the roof is sorted for now. Um, not yet, Maria. We spent six hours, seven, eight, really. so seven hours, seven, nearly eight hours yesterday, clearing the loft. Um, water came through one of the bedroom ceilings. And when we investigated that the roof is leaking, it leaked all into the loft and then through the ceiling. Uh, we have had this house for well over 25 years now. Um, and the loft showed it. <laughs> We, we had to clear the loft to actually make some space because we're expecting the insurance man around today to have a look to see what can be done. But we spent a lot of that. We can barely move this morning. Um, all of my joints are telling me that I shouldn't have done all of that work yesterday. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of stuff, lots of boxes, baby clothes. My children are like late teens now. Um, baby baskets, baths. Oh, photos. I've got boxes of photos to go through. So much stuff. A lot of the stuff we thought, why did we save this? Or what on earth is this? <laughs> so thank you, Maria. It isn't actually sorted yet. There is quite a lot of damage up there, but it's all clear and ready for the insurance man. So um, fingers crossed. Good morning, Martina. Just popping, uh, popping on before work. Have a good day at work. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, I said. I Silda, I hope I'm saying that right. Good morning, Mendy. Good morning. Leslie says good morning, Peter. Uh, good morning, Ruth. Um, Maria, I bet it was like the Goonies up there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think they are actually, you know, waifs and strays living up there. <laughs> but you can walk across it now and you can see it's a lot of rubbish to throw out. Good morning, Tess. Uh, Karen, that's horrendous. What a nightmare. Yeah, it was, it was, it needed doing. I must admit, we've been putting it off for so long. Uh, it needed doing, but it was a bit lot to do it all in one day. But we had to so that the insurance man could see what was there. Uh, thank you, Isilda. Right, let's have a look at today. Um, today is a request. I was asked to talk about the subject today, and the subject is the art of ritual. Uh, quite a big subject, quite a varied subject. Good morning, Elizabeth. So I'm going to cover the basics because I'm quite basic. <laughs> uh, 
there is a book, obviously. I wrote a book about it because, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> uh, fantastic photo, actually. On the front is that was from a Kitchen Witch Covenant Open Ritual uh, a few years ago now, that one. Um, and as always, I thank the people for letting me put a photograph of their bottoms on my front cover. <laughs> um, that was in a beach grove. We've got a beach grove that we use for our open rituals. So, uh, and there's a lot of, half of this book is actually rituals written by the Kitchen Witch Posse as well. So I'm going to talk about ritual today. So let's see where it takes us. As always, if you've uh, got any questions, pop them in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them. And I'm going to do things back to front today because I've just found my post-it notes with the list of events. <laughs> so I'll do them now just to throw my husband who's been poised with the links. He's now panicking. <laughs> so Sunday the 25th of October, we are ho hosting an online live sewing ritual, 7pm um, in the Kitchen Witch Coven. Uh, it's also being recorded for Witchfest to use as well. So that's very exciting. Uh, Friday the 30th of October, if you are a member of the Pagan Tribal Gathering Facebook group, I'm going to be doing a talk at 7.15, uh, Herbs and Ingredients of Sewing. Sunday the 8th of November, I'm doing a flower magic talk uh, on this page, on my author page, 4pm. A talk about flower magic and the flower magic oracle deck, but also doing a very exciting incense reveal in conjunction with the children of Artemis. Very exciting. I'll be giving away a free copy of the Oracle deck as well. Sunday the 15th of November is a Waffling Witches over in the Kitchen Witch Coven group and that's 4pm. And the usual Wednesday evening Moon Books, of course, live chats over on the Moon Books page. Lots of links coming up in the comments. Uh, so that's that done. That's out of the way. I can throw that away now. I'm done now. <laughs> Uh, Eva, it's like every Friday your talks coincide perfectly with my lessons. I knew, Eva, see, that's what it is. I knew. <laughs> uh, Maria, had this on Kindle but got lost after my account was compromised. Oh, no. That's a that's a bummer, basically. Um, but there you go. Things happen, I guess, with the electronics. Been there, done that. Once in the very, very old days when we used to have C prompt on your computer at work, I managed to wipe my entire C drive by mistake. I was not a favourite person at work that day. But, you yeah, know, stuff happens. So let's have a look at ritual. I've got truckloads of notes here, but they're just prompts. We'll see where it takes us. Ask me questions as we go along. Throw in your thoughts and your insights and we'll share. We'll share it all around like we do. Let's pour, let's pour me cup of tea first, though, in my little witchy teapot. Give it a bit of stir. Uh, I think it's chocolate mint tea today. So let's give that a pour. To keep me going. Make sure I don't knock it over. Right. Let's make a start. So grab a cup of tea and your slice of cake, obviously, because everyone has cake for breakfast. Actually, I'll be honest, I don't have any cake in the house at the moment, but after doing this live, I've got to go and make my son's birthday cake. So I'll be making an enormous chocolate mud cake. Uh, Maria loved the pot, Zenia loved the teapot. Uh, it's a set, it's actually pretty cool. Look, it's a little, there we go. Teapot rests on the top. Bought that in Pagan Pride, Pagan Pride Anglia last year, I think it was. Handmade by a very lovely lady. Um, I don't know who it was, to be honest. I'm sure if you contact Pagan Pride Anglia, they would be able to tell you. Um, Sylvia, the chocolate mint tea. <laughs> the chocolate mint tea is delicious. Uh, there's a review of some of the teas, actually, herbal teas on my blog. Um, right, so anyway, uh, a waffling or blathering, as, as someone suggested. So, ritual. I think people actually get a little bit scared about the word ritual, but really all it means is a series of things that you do on a regular basis. Having a shower every morning is a ritual. Brushing your teeth every day is a ritual. It's just uh, repetitive, really. Um, 
Elizabeth, I made chocolate babka. You've been watching Bake Off. <laughs> but delicious. So I think rituals are, it's a set of instructions or a set of repeated actions. And it they vary so much from solitary rituals, um, natural on spur of the moment rituals to scripted ones to great big ceremonial ones. I think you have to do what suits you. There are differences between Wiccan and Druid rituals to a certain point. Uh, heathens do another type of rituals. There is a, a degree of difference, but I think you have to find out what works for you. Um, husband's put up the link to the tea. Bird Blend, thank you. I couldn't remember the name of the tea company. Bird Blend, they make fantastic teas. Um, so yeah, I, I think for me, I have been involved in the very strict ceremonial rituals where you're not allowed to laugh. Can you imagine how hard that is for me? Um, to, air, to air kitchen witch rituals, which have been described as organised chaos, which is, that's how my head is really. So, you know. <laughs> but my basic training originally was in Wicca and I've also studied Druidry as well. So I think the structure of a ritual is pretty much the same across the board with various tweaks. If you've got that structure, then you can play around with it and make it yours, really. Uh, I think visualisation is quite key. Uh, we talked last week, I think it was actually, about doing rituals in your own home, which benefits a lot from visualisation because you don't need the space to do it. Um, so if you are restricted, visualisation is quite useful. Um, from all aspects of magic working, visualisation is key from visualising the circle and the elements to the spell working. Uh, energy work obviously is involved generally in the middle of a, a ritual. Um, that goes without saying, I think, the point of a ritual or the point of a lot of rituals is to raise energy for a particular purpose. So. Uh, Good morning, Kelly. Uh, Christine, any rituals with laughter bring the energy up? So great for all. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I believe. Laughter is a huge, huge boost of energy. Um, and if you can get that in a circle, then I think you've lifted it. But, you know, I have been to the more strict ones. Um, different energy, different energy. I think tools as well, magical tools. Haven't done a talk about that yet. Mm, mental note. Um, <laughs> You can do a ritual with nothing. I've done a ritual in the middle of Dartmoor with nothing um, to hand. I've done hand fastings with huge altars laid out with all kinds of paraphernalia. And I've done bits and pieces in between. So it is, get rid of the keyboard. it is entirely up to you what you use. I don't tend to use an awful lot of tools in ritual. Uh, I use a cauldron because I like to burn stuff and that's safe. <laughs> You can cast with a wand, you can cast with your pointy finger, it, you know, it's, you can use a chalice, you can use all kinds of stuff, but you can use natural things as well and you don't have to use anything. It really is personal choice. Good morning, Lexi. Right, let's have a quick sip. Oh, that's yum. Clothing is an interesting one and jewellery is an interesting one as well. Um, I wear clothes when I do a ritual, particularly when I do an open ritual in the middle of the field with lots of other people, because, you know, that's not a pretty sight. <laughs> uh, there is, uh, I think, there is this idea of doing uh, ritual sky clad, but I think it is a little bit dated. Uh, it had a time and a place, I think. Uh, and if that's what you want to do, then absolutely go for it. You know, it's it's personal choice. Don't ever be pressurized into doing it. I actually feel that a ritual where everyone is naked takes the focus off the point of the ritual because people are going to feel uncomfortable. Not all of them, obviously, but some of the people are going to feel uncomfortable. I think it has to definitely be a personal choice. But it absolutely isn't necessary. Uh, the original idea was that clothes restricted the flow of energy. But it's absolute tosh, basically. Absolute tosh. <laughs> um, you know, energy flows, whether you're completely naked or whether you're wearing 
17 layers and a cloak and a hat. You know, it's it's just one of those things that happens anyway. Uh, Maria has done rituals with an incense stick burning in a candle. Perfect. Keep, uh, you know, I like to keep things simple and uncomplicated, but good morning, Vanessa. So I think the idea of sky cleared ritual is entirely your choice. Um, it has to be. Uh, clothing. This is an interesting one. I've done rituals in my pyjamas. I've done a ritual, not in the middle of field, pyjamas at home. Um, Lexi, I feel it's a bit too cold to be sky clad right now. Yeah, I think Lexi, if you particularly live in the UK, sky clad is, is it's always too chilly to be sky clad, really. <laughs> Good morning, Lucy. Uh, Xenia, totally agree with you if you want sky clad. Yeah. Christine, you've got to be mad to do a right outside in the winter months. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Denise. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that if you want to do it, go for it. It's your call. But, you know, it's not it's not a necessity. But I think clothing is an interesting one. We always encourage people to come to wear open rituals uh, and wear whatever you feel comfortable wearing. So there's always a mixture. There will be people in cloaks wearing circlets. There will be people in the witchy Stevie Nicks dresses. Uh, there will be people in jeans and T-shirts. I think you have to be comfortable. Uh, I've done rituals with the Dorset Grove at Stonehenge, where we've been allowed into the centre, where English Heritage requests that you dress up. So we always wear air finery for that because it's good for the tourists, basically. But I also think there is a, a perhaps a side to that, that if you're going to go to the bother of doing a big proper ritual, then dressing in your finery is a little bit of a way of honouring the gods, perhaps. If you're at home and, and doing your usual ritual or just casting a circle for spell work or whatever, then perhaps not so much. But I think if you're going to do a big ritual at somewhere like Stonehenge, then you can you can wear your finery. I mean, who, we all love a chance to dress up in all their gear anyway. But um, I think, again, you have to be comfortable. I've worn my cloaks at various rituals and they always get in the way. I end up taking it off anyway, particularly if I'm leading the ritual because it always gets on my nerves. <laughs> um, Maria suggests a fire if you're going to go sky clad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, finery can be expensive. Yes, indeed. Um, I've been lucky. My cloaks have been gifted to me, but uh, cloaks can be very expensive. You can make them. You can even make them out of a tablecloth and just kind of clip it. Um, so there are ways. But yeah, I we've never wanted people that come to the Kitchen Witch Rituals to feel that they couldn't come because they didn't have a cloak or, you know, poncy dresses. I think that we need to lose that idea. If you want to come along to the ritual in your jeans, then just do it. Um, I think you have to be comfortable and I, we wouldn't want to exclude anybody um, because or make them feel that they couldn't feel that they were they could come because they couldn't afford whatever to wear. So I think that's down to personal choice as well. But you will find that some groups do require a certain level of dress. Um, some of the more closed covens do require particular cloaks and things. So find somewhere that you're comfortable with and a group that you're comfortable with. Um, Vanessa, we always have a fire in the grove. It would be lovely, Vanessa, but we're, where we hold airs, there are strict rules and regulations on holding fires because it is a forest and things can get away with you. So um, we're not actually allowed to have them. It's a shame, but I understand the, the reasons behind it. Uh, Maria bought a little cloak for ritual, then lockdown happened. Next year, Maria, next year. <laughs> Karen, I set mine on fire during a ritual in the woods. Yeah, see, that is the thing. If When you're trying to light candles outside, which is always a bit of a job anyway, um, it can be quite quite dangerous to have flames and cloaks flapping about. Uh, Christine, Halloween is a great time to get cheap costumes. Yeah, you can put oh, decorations for your home, Halloween decorations that you can have all year round. Uh, Xenia, the medieval dresses with the long sleeves can be dangerous when you walk around candles. Do you know, when I first started on this path, I started collecting all of the dresses with the droopy sleeves and 
I got so fed up with trying to eat with your sleeves dipping in things and I don't have any anymore. I gradually got rid of them. <laughs> uh, practicality for me, yeah, particularly when you're trying to light candles in the wind and things like that. Elizabeth, I always look like a cushion in those velvet dresses. Oh, no. I'm sure you don't, Elizabeth. I'm sure you look lovely. Um, Vanessa, use lanterns. Yes, we do. if we've got candles outside, we do use lanterns, Vanessa. But again, we're not supposed to because it's a, it's it's flames and they've got quite strict rules. Um, and I do understand it. You know, it's a huge forest and there has to be some kind of control. Uh, because not everyone is trustworthy, basically, or sensible. So there has to be a, a rule. Um, Devon has different colour velvet cloaks. Yep, that seems to be the thing. Uh, Iona, can I do without candles and incense because of allergies and sacred and scared of candles? Iona, you can do a ritual with nothing. Don't have to use anything at all. Um, visualization or you know whatever works for you really um you don't need to have any tools whatsoever um maria suggests the fake candles yes the ones with the little electric or battery operated ones bye child going to work <laughs> Uh, Jess went to Home Sense to stock up on new home decor on the 5th of October and it all gone. Do we, yeah, it does get bought up quite quickly, I think. Uh, Mendy's a t shirts and cowboy boots kind of girl. You go, Mendy. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Um, Zenia, there are lovely LED candles. Yeah, they work really well, actually, don't they? They do. Vanessa, I love your rituals. There's always cake. <laughs> Oh, yes. You know, we have a reputation as the cake coven. So we always have cake at our rituals. <laughs> uh, Christine, battery candles are good. Yes, they are a good substitute, definitely. Many a time I've stood with cloaks round like this, all round, trying to get a candle or incense to light when you're in the middle of a field. Uh, Maria suggests TK Maxx. Yes, they always have good Halloween stuff. So... Um, Clothing, I think, is, is up to you unless your coven requires something specific. If you are doing something special, then I think a little bit of finery um, doesn't hurt. Jewellery is an interesting one as well. Jewellery comes along with the, the old, idea, old idea of clothing uh, stopping the energy flow. Um, it was always suggested that unless you wore real gold and silver, any other jewellery would stop the energy flowing. And I say again to that, complete and utter tosh. So <laughs> you wear whatever you want to wear. I've never had any problems with any energy flow or anything. Um, I think it's perhaps nice to wear specific jewellery that means something sacred to you. Uh, I quite often wear one of my Kalak necklaces or my um, wild ball totem necklace if I'm in ritual. Um, Again, up to you. But if you want to wear your bright pink plastic bubble necklace, you wear it. You know, it's up to you. Uh, everyone's saying good morning to Eric. Yes, he's barking because child went out to work. <laughs> Emma, I'm not. If I'm not dripping silver, I'm not happy with. <laughs> we do like our silver, don't we? Uh, Lucy suggests shops have downgraded their Halloween stock this year. Yeah, I think they have. Uh, I, I do think they have. Uh, Elizabeth suggests not falling in a stream. Yeah, don't do that either. That's not good. <laughs> so I think clothing and jewellery are the same. Go with what works for you. Go with what you feel um, happy with. I do find to a certain degree, if you put on your cloak or if you put on just a circlet, um, I've got one actually up there. Oh, there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. I've got several of them. It is a little bit like um, putting you in the right mood. It's kind of a, a key to switch you into magic mode or ceremonial mode, if you like. So, but, you know, go with whatever works for you, really. Uh, there's also suggestions about taking a ritual bath, which, you know, if you're going to do the whole shebang, uh, you can start with a ritual bath. It's all about purifying the body and cleansing the body, the physical body, as well as the mind, before you step into the circle. 
you don't want to step into a circle with a load of negative energy. So the idea is that taking a ritual bath will cleanse all of that beforehand. Um, I do it in the shower. Uh, I, it sounds, I never take a bath. <laughs> sounds bizarre, doesn't it? No, I always shower. So that for me is my way of cleansing my body beforehand. But if you smudge the body, it does just the same thing as well. So, you know, it's up to you. Uh, go with what feels right. Uh, good morning. I'm going to make sure I say this right. Lionel, I hope that's right. First time seeing you live. Oh, welcome from Mexico. Welcome, welcome. Uh, nice to see, see you. Nice to see your name. <laughs> uh, Jess, makes me sad when they bypass Halloween and get the Christmas stuff out already. I, I think, I mean, I remember my birthday's on Halloween. Um, not a big surprise, is it? <laughs> It, it, Halloween was never a thing when I was a child, not even as a teenager either. Halloween in the UK just wasn't a thing it, or in the south where I lived. It's only in the last probably 20 years that it's become a thing over here. Um, but I think it, it does get, um, I don't know, perhaps not as celebrated over here as it is in America. Um, yeah, Mendy's with showers as well. Yeah, ritual shower, just as good as a ritual bath. Tess, how do you smudge the body? What does that mean? Okay, um, when you have your smudge stick, whether it's an incense stick or incense cone or a bundle of sage or herbs or whatever you use, with the smoke, as you would go around your house and waft the smoke around the house to cleanse, you do it for your body. It's easier if you've got another person. We sometimes do it before our rituals. Um, when everyone is standing in circle, someone will go round with incense smoke and usually a bird wing uh, and waft the smoke, head, arms, down the body, right down to the feet. So you waft the smoke over the body to cleanse all of the person, to cleanse their energy. You can do it yourself. It's not quite so easy. <laughs> you need three or four arms. <laughs> um, but yes, you can smudge the body just as you would smudge a room. It's all about cleansing the energy. Just waft the smoke over yourself. You could do it as well if you're not good with smoke. You could do it with a body mist spray, just distilled water and essential oils in a spray bottle and spray that around your body as well. It does exactly the same thing. You can say a chant if you want to as well. Um, so hopefully that helps, Tess. Uh, good morning, Teresa. Uh, Denise, Halloween started in the UK with a film E.T. Yeah, I can well believe that, Denise. That's, yeah, probably about the first time that I noticed it. Um, Linda, visited my cousin in America in October a few years ago. They got lots of Halloween stuff. Yeah, I think they do, it is a bigger thing in, in America. Um, just one of those things, really. Uh, so ritual bath can be a ritual shower or it could be smudging your body. It's just really so that you go into circle without any negative energy. Uh, sacred space is an interesting one. Uh, sacred space is wherever you want to make it, really. If I do a ritual here, it's usually in my conservatory. Uh, and I do quite often smudge that space first. And I've got a connection to the land that I live on because I connect with the land that my house is on all the time. But when we have our open rituals, one of the first things I do when we get up to the field is just take a moment and connect with the ancestors of the land, with the energy, the spirit of the land and ask permission so that we can uh, use that space. Some covens will sweep. They'll do a ritual sweeping with a besom or a broom around the circle it doesn't actually touch the ground though it's not physically sweeping because let's face it if you're in a field or in a forest you'd be sweeping forever <laughs> sweeping up all the fallen leaves and bits and pieces so the broom doesn't actually touch the ground it's a few inches off it's a spiritual um sweeping and they sweep around the circle oh, negative so they sweep widow shins anti-clockwise to clear any negative energy um, just to make it a clear sacred space and of course if you are out in the field there are the practicalities of checking that there's no dog poop or anything there as well <laughs> and I think physical space is whatever you've got say I do rituals at home and I do rituals in fields I've done rituals in 
on Dartmoor and various other places. Even did a ritual once in a church, <laughs> in, a, in a Baptist church hall, which was quite interesting. <laughs> um, so you just need a bit of space. If all you've got is space that you can just stand in, then you just turn around on the spot. You have to make it work for you, really. Um, you have to use whatever you've got. Um, Vanessa, it's a retail world. It is, and whatever, they're only going to sell what sells, aren't they? What's going to make them money. Uh, Denise, as a solitary witch, I smudge by creating smoke wall with sage and walking through it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yes, definitely. Um, Maria, it's a symbolic sweeping. Yes, clearing, cleansing the circle with the broom is symbolic, yeah. Uh, Dell, we've always done Halloween in Scotland, but we carved turnips, no pumpkins, when I was a kid in the 60s. Well, yes, because Scotland uh, is where it, it all began, really, and then transported over to America. So all, all Hallow's Eve. Uh, Christine, that is just the same as me. I always connect with the old ones and feel if the energy of the land is good for ritual. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of manners, actually. If you are going to use whatever space you're going to use, I think it's managed to connect with the energy of that area and check with the ancestors and ask that it's all right to do a ritual there. Um, Maria, yes, it is originally neeps as pumpkins aren't. No, pumpkins aren't from here. But yeah, but have you ever tried carving a turnip? That's hard work. <laughs> you don't want to be doing that. Uh, Elizabeth, has the land ever said no to your ritual? Thankfully, no, I've not ever had a, a, a no. Uh, the area that we use uh, for our kitchen witch rituals, we use the same grove. Well, we've got a beach grove and next to it is a yew grove, so it's perfect. And it's kind of used to us by now. Um, other places, so the Stonehenge rituals we've done, I don't connect with Stonehenge very well. I always feel a little bit uncomfortable there. I think it's all a bit commercialised now. So whether they are happy or not, I'm not sure. Um, but no, I've never had anybody say, no, bugger off, don't use their land. <laughs> but you never know. But again, I think it is just the fact that you've asked. They appreciate the manners of it. Um Teapot and cup update from Emma. I think I found the artist. I actually can't remember, um, Emma. I will check the link afterwards and, and come back to you. Um, Maria Sun carved a turnip a few years back. It is hard work. Karen used Swedes when you were little. As a family always ce celebrated. No idea how they did them. No, because Swedes, <laughs> Swedes and turnips are so hard. But there you go. So that's your space and I, it can be anywhere you can do a ritual in your bedroom you can do a ritual in your garden you know it's whatever space you've got um i think it helps if you are doing in ritual indoors to make sure that it is clutter and dust free yeah i know it's boring isn't it but i think again that helps the energy flow um if you've got loads and loads of clutter in your house and loads and loads of right, you haven't cleaned for six years <laughs> the energy's not going to have a very easy time flowing. Um, but, you know, you can use visualisation again for that to cleanse as well. It doesn't have to be smoke. You can cleanse using visualisation. White light, blue light, whichever you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. Uh, Christine, I didn't use a place once as people had been using it for negative rights. Yeah, I, you, it's trusting your intuition, isn't it? You... You know, quite often I've walked into a home or a shop or a building and you you get hit with that negative energy, don't you? And you can feel it. Um, trust your intuition on it. Trust it. Uh, Denise, interesting what you said about Stonehenge. Went as a child 45 plus years ago and there was a connection. Went last year and felt nothing. It felt dead. Yeah, I mean, when I was a child back in the 70s, before it was all fenced off, my dad used to take us there for picnics and we'd sit in the middle of the circle and have picnics there. And it was lovely. It was fascinating. But yeah, I, I don't feel a particular connection to Stonehenge. In fact, I prefer Avebury for stone circles, um, but I prefer Dartmoor even more or Cornwall, different, different areas. Uh, Elizabeth, I was in Savernake and it clearly said no, very negative. Yeah, you will find it, but trust your intuition on it. Trust your intuition. Uh, Tess, your tea, bird and blend used to be called bluebird tea. They are based in Brighton. Yes, they are. Um, I do love their teas. They are fantastic. Their chai, sticky chai is very nice too. 
Uh, anyway, let's see. Grounding and centering. Uh, something I think before you should uh, start a ritual and also afterwards. Ground and center yourself. Um, a ritual can be quite energizing. It should be quite energizing. Um, so grounding your cent and centering yourself beforehand so that you are focused is well worth doing. And grounding afterwards is worth doing because if you've raised and worked with lots of energy, if you don't ground and get rid of that excess energy, you're going to have a whacking headache for the rest of the day. Uh, Denise, never been to Avebury, so we'll have to visit. Yes, definitely. Well worth a look. Well worth a look. Ah, Christine says Saber Lake was a place where murder took place. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, Xenia says. Avery instead of Stonehenge. Yeah, and of course, it's free to go to Avery as well. <laughs> um, to start the ritual, I've been to several or many Druid rituals, and they have a procession, which I quite like the idea of. Um, Christine will know this, obviously. Um, the Dorset Grove Druids have their rituals at Knowlton, which is a Saxon church ruin, but it's entered by a wooden gate. So the gatekeeper stands at the gate and says his bit. And then the whole of the group process across the field and round and enter the circle at the east because the east is where the sun rises. Um, so it's quite nice. You meet the gatekeeper and you have to ask permission to enter the sacred space. Once the gatekeeper is assured that your intentions are honourable, he allows everyone through or she. Then you process to the edge of the circle, Turn you turn and pause in a lot of druid rituals and you salute the sun. Uh, and then you move into the circle, which I think is quite a nice idea. We don't tend to do that in witchcraft rituals, but I think it's a nice idea. Uh, and then you follow the similar sort of structure uh, for most, for most, not all, but most. So the first thing you do is cast your circle. The circle is to keep negative energy out but it's also to keep the energy in the circle that you build and that you work with. Um, you can cast the circle in all kinds of ways. You can just stand on the spot if you're limited for space and visualise the circle around you. We've had at our kitchen witch rituals, we've had people walk around sprinkling herbs, sprinkling flower petals. Um, be careful if you are out in nature. Be careful that whatever you sprinkle is biodegradable uh, and also be careful I wouldn't sprinkle seeds because they aren't going to be generally na uh, natural to that area uh, and they do have a tendency to grow <laughs> as I've found from throwing bits and bobs of old spells into the garden that have seeds in things tend to grow <laughs> but we've also cast circle by blowing bubbles before we did a fairy ritual where we blew bubbles are walking around the edge so it, it's um, I've seen people use ribbons and string. If you are on the beach or somewhere that's got a flat surface, you can cast the circle with sand or draw. Uh, if you are standing on the beach, you could draw a circle with actually in the sand. Lexley, yeah, I was just about to say, don't sprinkle salt. Um, if you are indoors and you're happy to sprinkle salt on your carpet or your floor and hoover it up afterwards, then fine. But please, please don't sprinkle a circle of salt when you are outside in nature it's not good for the soil and it's not good for animals um so yes don't don't do that <laughs> but you can just visualize the circle you don't have to don't have to throw anything on the ground you can just visualize it and as well if you're visualizing the circle around you once you've done, remember that it's not just it's not just a hula hoop <laughs> around you. It needs to form a sphere. It needs to come above and it needs to go below. You need to surround yourself in a big, big old bubble. Um, good morning, Gypsy. It needs to be a big bubble to surround you. So it's not not just a hula hoop. Um, Emma has suggested dried crushed eggshells. Yes, that's a good that's a good one. Stop the slugs too. <laughs> Uh, I've also, um, some of the study that I've done, we cast the circle round and then we cast it over and above uh, as well. Uh, but whatever way you can visualise it, you don't have to um, do anything physical. 
uh, a chant is good when you're casting it because it sets your intent and your purpose. You can use a wand, you can use an athame, you can use a sword, you can use a staff, you can use your pointy finger. It's entirely up to you. You walk diosil or clockwise around the circle when you cast it. You walk anti-clockwise or with the shins to uncast it. Um, and that is, you can keep it as basic as you want. We've also done it where the group cast the circle and they link hands and walk slowly um, round in a circle three times to cast the circle. Um, three times, six times, nine times, or just the once, it's entirely up to you. The circle is a symbol. It is a, a never-ending symbol, isn't it? It's continuous. So, uh, Zenny, a good morning, Julie. Uh, Lexi, I do my rituals in my living room and I have a Wheel of the Year rug that I put down as the outline of my circle. That is genius, Lexi, absolutely genius. Um, Xenia, uh, that's interesting. I do this too. Casting over and above after casting it around myself. Yeah, it's good. It's a good idea because it reminds you that it's not just a hula hoop and that it has to go above and below as well. Um, there is the uh, there's a quote: "Perfect love and perfect trust," and it's used quite a lot in Wiccan rituals. It was a phrase apparently mentioned in one of Gerald Gardner's books, and it's appeared in several poems and reads ever since. Um, I suspect the idea of it was around before then, but some traditions actually ask you, how do you enter this circle? And you are required to answer in perfect love and perfect trust before they'll actually let you in. The idea being that you enter the ritual circle, um, that you're sharing the space with everyone with respect to everyone else that's there. Uh, some people remember it might be their first ritual or they might be feeling nervous or vulnerable for whatever reason. So you're agreeing that you bring respect and trust in with you and that you'll show that to your fellow members as well. Um, I, it's a nice idea, but I think if, if, you're, if you've got the right circle and the right group of people, then that goes without saying. So I think that's got to be a choice, really, that you make. Uh, if you're holding an open ritual and you don't know a lot of the people there, then that might be worth it. But um, we've been very lucky with the kitchen witch rituals that everyone just it goes without saying. Um, as above, so below. You may have heard the term as well. Um, I'm reading this because I could never remember all the words. It is traditionally attributed to the emerald tablets of Hermes Tri. <laughs> Trismegistus. I just let's just go with that, shall we? <laughs> that which is below corresponds to that which is above, and that which is above corresponds to that which is below, to accomplish the miracle of the one thing. And all systems of magic are said to work with that formula. What's above is the same, what's below. The universe is the same as the divine, the divine is the same as man, man is the same as the cell, and it goes on and on scientific stuff what is above us is below us what's inside us is outside us basically we're all connected uh, everything to everything else we use this connection with our will and energy to create magic and change deep stuff but you know just we're all connected basically so that you need to remember when you're in circle. And I have found this as well, whether we've been doing online rituals or whether we were doing open rituals, it's the energy and the will and the intent of all the people that are within that group that makes the, the energy of the ritual and makes the ritual either a success or a failure. So everyone is connected. And if you're all in it with the same idea, then you should be fine. Blessed be is another term that is often said. Um, you'll hear it inside and outside of ritual. And it's all, it generally seems to be used as a sort of a, a thank you, if you like, if you're offered food or drink or applied to a greeting. Loosely translated, it means you wish the person good and positive blessings. So mote it be is also uh, a phrase that's used quite often. Um, it's basically to finalise a spell or, or a chant or something. Um, I tend to use a Star Trek quote myself. I use Make It So from Jean-Luc Picard. But <laughs> it's entirely up to you. It means get it done, basically. Um, again, it's up to you whether you use it or not. Druids tend to call for peace, which I think is quite a nice idea. Uh, someone will walk to each 
cardinal point and state out loud, let there be peace in the east, to which the others within the circle reply, there is peace in the east. Then they move to the next direction and repeat, um, basically to bring peace within the ritual. Then you call the quarters. And I think, again, this is a lot to do with visualisation. Um, you can call in the quarters, you can call in the elements, you can call in the directions, you can call the guardians of the watchtowers. It's all one and the same kind of thing. Um, you can call in the elementals or dragons or animals that correspond to each element. It's about asking the four elements to bring their energy and their powers to the ritual. Um, oh, Lexi's put a link to a, a pagan round blanket. Um, brilliant. Fantastic idea. Xenia, make it so. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of a Star Trek fan, so make it so works for me. Um, so I think the elements as well, it's about each element has its compass direction, obviously, northeast, southwest, earth, air, fire, water, and each one brings its own particular energies to the ritual. So basically, when you're calling the quarters, you're asking them to lend their energy to the ritual um, in whatever form. You can have symbols of them. You can have a dish of soil for earth, um, incense for air or fire, um, dish of water for west. Um, it, it's entirely up to you what you do, but you can draw elemental symbols, make it work for you basically in the space that you've got. We've even had we've even had pictures of different types of cake at each of the four quarters to correspond with each element. So um, go with what works for you. But that's what we do. You call in the elements to ask them to lend their energy to the ritual. Uh, so Wiccans do uh, working with the pentagram. So the five pointed star relates each point relates to a different element, including spirit you can do invoking a pentagram. So basically you draw the pentagram in the air at each quarter and you start at a different point for each of the four quarters. And you do the reverse, um, do it in the reverse to get rid of them afterwards. Two words invoking and evoking, uh, I used to get completely confused with these. Uh, they are different, uh, we're a bit basic. In, when we use air coven, we just say calling in <laughs> or bugger offs. <laughs> Invocation and evocation are often used interchangeably, and both words are apparently derived from the Latin word vocare, which means to call forth. Both words mean to summon something that's non-human, but there is a difference. Evocation is used to call an entity forth, but in such a way the practitioner is not actually linked to them. You invite deity or spirit or the element to join you, but you still have control. With invocation, the practitioner becomes a vessel, inviting the entity to come forth into them, giving control over to the deity or the spirit. Basically, you're inviting them into your body, your head, your spirit. So bottom line is invocation is calling into and evocation is calling forth. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> I would, if you're thinking about um, invocation, this is drawing down the moon, basically. Um, it's inviting deity into you. I would suggest you wait until you are more experienced with ritual and working with deity before you attempt it. It is amazing. It can be incredibly powerful. Um, but it does take a bit of practice to work with. When we call or when we invite the quarters or the elements in, we are just inviting them in to the circle. We're not actually making a huge commitment to them. Uh, and the same with deity. When we invite deity into a ritual, it's for similar reasons. We invite them to join the ritual to lend their energies, to lend their support, their particular characteristics, their particular personalities. Um, we want to honour them, but we also want them to witness the ritual and to provide any energy or guidance. Um, do check before you call in particular deities. Um, do your homework. Do some research on them. Don't call in a deity that you've never, ever read anything about or worked any information on. You need to do a bit of research first so that you know what you're dealing with or who you're dealing with, I should say. Some traditions only invite a goddess in, uh, others tend to do a balance of masculine and feminine, so they'll have a god and a goddess. 
uh, in their own coven rituals, we, we end up with four, basically. We have two goddesses and two gods, because that's just how it works. Uh, and it always seems to work for us. But you can also do a ritual without calling in deity at all. Uh, you can even work with just um, Father Sky and Mother Earth, or, or none at all. Again, it's it's entirely up to you. So if you're ready to send out the party invite to the Lord and Lady, um, make sure your wording is polite and respectful. Oi, you lot get over here is probably not going to bring them in. <laughs> and if it does, they won't be in a very good mood. So make sure that you do invite them uh, in a respectful way, basically. Um, Hail and welcome is usually said after inviting them in as well. Um, Lexi, if anyone gets lost during home rituals, good idea to use cheats, cheat sheets. I have a laminated ritual order on my wall above my altar so I don't get lost. Brilliant idea, Lexi. I must admit, for uh, kitchen witch rituals, we do have scripts um, because there's usually six of us um, and we all call quarters and circle casting and deity and there's usually a script so that, yes, so that it is... I think once you're used to doing it, you know the basic order. It's practice. I, you know, I know off the top of my head what order everything goes in. But if you've got particular words and things, it's a good idea to have a script for them. Um, definitely. Um, what else have we got? So quite often as well, I've said about the smudging. Quite often people will come around and smudge you in the circle. Sometimes it's done with blessed water or salt water so you actually get to flick water at everybody <laughs> in the circle it's actually quite a nice idea if people aren't very good with smoke so you can use it with um, blessed water anointing happens sometimes as well that can be done with blessed water or an essential oil and you it's dabbed on your forehead or your wrists and given a few blessings as you go around the circle um if you're interested, there are some very Wiccan rituals. The Great Rite, which is where the idea of the cup and the athame combination works. Fivefold kiss, drawing down the moon, I've said about, uh, which is inviting the goddess into your body. But in the centre, once you've done your circle, once you've called in your quarters and invited deity, now's the time to work your magic. It might be a spell, it might be a meditation, it might be raising energy for healing. Um, that's the time to do all your magic. That's when you raise the energy. We've done raising energy with drums before, which works very well. We've done it with uh, clapping, which works as well. But you could just be working your spell. You could sit and do a meditation to meet a deity or an animal spirit. Um, that's the time when you do that right in the middle. Chanting is also a good way. Uh, Druids will chant the Arwen, which is all about inspiration, uh, and that raises the energy. Uh, if you are doing something that you want to direct energy at, for healing, for instance, you create a, what's called a cone of power. So if everyone in the circle is drumming or chanting or clapping, the high priest or high priestess will direct that energy into a cone of power and then release it where it needs to go. Um, there's also the god and goddess positions. It sounds a little bit dodgy. It isn't. <laughs> when you are inviting the goddess, you can stand in circle like this. Feet slightly apart and your arms in the air in a Y shape. That's the goddess position. Um, god position, uh, if you're calling in the masculine, you can stand with your feet together and your arms crossed across your heart. Um, that works quite well. Uh, you could use... Anything in the middle, meditation, divination, whatever you want to do. Once you've done your work, um, good morning, Mitch. Um, let me just. Mm -mm -mm. Once you've done your work, it's a good idea to do an offering. Uh, I like to. We like to tip some of the drink and the food that we have in ritual on the floor as an offering to say thank you. Again, if you're outside, don't leave anything that doesn't degrade. But you could leave, um, you know, a flower, twigs, um, just water, one of the trees, something very small, but a gesture as an offering to thank the deity, which brings me to the feast. Yes, we always have cake in our rituals. <laughs> 
We stop at the point after the working and we feast. It helps to ground you, but it also gives us a connection to everybody because everybody then has drink and they have food. Sometimes a in ritual, uh, one cup will be passed around with wine in for everybody to take a drink. Uh, quite often it's may you never hunger, may you never thirst is said when the drink and the food is passed around. We tend to have individual cups because, you know, a little bit more hygienic. <laughs> Uh, and we'll have a drink that is often associated with the ritual or the intent that we're working with. We have cakes, we have cookies. Uh, I've been to rituals where they've had big platters of dried fruit and nuts as well, which is lovely. Um, but you feast and then we give a little bit of that feast to the ground as an offering. And then you break it all down. You do it all in reverse. So once you've finished um, your feasting, you thank the deity. It's important to thank them. They've joined you for your ritual, so it's important to thank them. It's only good manners, really. You bid them farewell and thank you for joining your ritual. Then you go backwards again through the elements. So whatever order you called the elements in originally, you do it in the reverse order to release them. And you just thank them for joining the ritual and send them on the way, basically, politely. And then you close your circle. So you walk the circle anti-clockwise. <laughs> that way <laughs> um visualize the light dissipating disappearing into the ground or up into the sky or you know um disappearing anyway um and that's kind of it then make sure if you're outside before you leave that you have cleared up all your rubbish and not left anything behind um we have I've lost count of how many kitchen witch open rituals we've had, but every single one has involved a stray dog. <laughs> We're in an area where people walk their dogs and there's always a dog joins us for the ritual. Um, but take note if any birds or uh, animals of any sort come across. We did a hand fasting once in Burley and we had a horse walk across the ritual, which was quite interesting. Um, just be careful if you've got stuff there that's edible that animals can't get at it. And, you know, having a laugh, it really, really does help. And don't worry about making mistakes. We've made plenty. We've fallen over. We've said things in the wrong order. We've gone in the wrong direction. Um, candles have blown out. Things have fallen over. Uh, we got hit with torrential rain once. Uh, my initiation at Stonehenge, um, it hailstoned. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a sign. Um, yeah, you, you know, things happen. Uh, the gods have got a sense of humour, so don't worry about it. Don't panic about it. Just, you know, move on from it. If you said a line wrong and you think you need to say it again, just repeat it. Um, if you went the wrong way, don't worry about it. Um, it really, really isn't that, you know, it's not worth worrying about it. Um Tess, yes, our Artemis have done moving magic with Tam and raised loads of energy, very powerful. Yeah, I, if it's done right, you can raise a huge amount of power. You really can. Uh, Christine, at Stonehenge once, we were visited by a hare and also the crow of the stones visiting and called out. Fantastic. There were lots of crows at Stonehenge, aren't they? They can, you know. Um, so I, quick, I, I will put this on a blog. A quick at a glance. Cleanse yourself in the ritual space, cast a circle, call the quarters, invite deity, raise the energy, do the spell working, make the offering and have the feasting and the drinking, thank deity, release the quarters, close the circle and then ground. Do remember to ground afterwards, whether it's clapping your hands, stamping your feet, doing a tree visualisation exercise or just putting your palms of your hands down on the ground and letting the excess energy go back into the ground. Um, you do need to ground after a ritual. Um, Tanya, I feel better now. Never did it as was worried I would do something wrong. Oh, you can't, Tanya. Give yourself a script uh, the first time. If you, you know, a script is absolutely fine. Work from a script. Um, and if something goes wrong, it, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't. Um, don't not do it for fear of that. Um, it, it'll all come right. It will do. Um, I quite often get asked, do I need a reason for doing a ritual? Well, you know, there are things 
there's the Sabbath, there's rites of passage, um, dedications, initiations, wickenings, hand fasting, for doing spell work, uh, moon magic, or celebrating the full moon or the new moon. Uh, we've got a new moon now, haven't we? Um, hand parting, crossing over. Just to honour a deity, we've done quite a lot of kitchen ritual rituals to celebrate a particular goddess or a god. Um, animal spirit guides, if you want to work with an animal spirit guide, you can do a ritual to bring that about. We've done rituals focusing on each of the elements individual as well. And any intent, healing, love, protection, they can all be done with a ritual. Um, Maria, nearly forgot to close it once. Yeah, but then I've had, you know, that's happened too. If you forget to close the ritual down, it's not the end of the world. You aren't going to get struck down by lightning. Um, if you do remember a, a while later, then it might be worth just mentally visualising it in your head. Um, Lexi knocked over my mead offering mid-ritual carpet. Smell nice for the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a recommended carpet cleaner, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it happens stuff happens it honestly does it isn't the end of the world rituals are a fascinating experience um the very first one i did at home i felt like a complete wally but you do get more comfortable with them and you do get more experienced with them and you'll find that you end up tweaking them and, and turning them if it is your first one just pick one out of a book to do um and follow the instructions but then once you get more experienced at it, you can make changes to yourself. Uh, Denise will definitely use a script because I can never remember my words for creating my circle. Yeah, I'm rubbish, Denise. I don't remember people's names or words. So, <laughs> yes, we always have a script. Although quite often in the Kitchen Witch scripts, they give me the bits that say Rachel Waffles off script and it'll actually be written down <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> but yes, if you've taken the time to write some beautiful corticals or circle castings put it in a script and read it it's not going to be any less powerful um i do find with my ones at home i use the same circle casting each time so i've ended up memorizing it eventually but even then i don't always get it right yeah there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a script um zenia the carpet demanded a sacrifice <laughs> yeah, obviously <laughs> But yeah, don't let it stop you doing a ritual. A script is absolutely fine. Um, and I say for the kitchen witch rituals, we use them all the time. So not a problem. It is, however, quite interesting to do what I call a, a natural or a wild ritual. If you find yourselves in a field or a wood or anywhere quiet to just do one off the cuff. We did it. There was a group of four or five of us were in the Chalice Well Gardens last year. And we just did a ritual there and then. No forethought, no practice. We just cobbled it together. It was very simple and very short, but it worked. We just did it off the cuff and it was brilliant. Uh, Maria, can you repeat the same ritual at a later time? Absolutely. You can have a standard ritual sort of set. You can have the same circle casting chant. You can have the same quarter calls chant, you know, and then just swap in and out. Um, for different deities or for different intents just use the same corticals the same circle casting and if you repeat it and use it enough then you will end up memorizing it so you can do it on off the bat vanessa joining you on a friday morning could be a bit of a ritual <laughs> yes or a chore depending on how you look at it <laughs> Uh, Xenia, it's my happy place, happy time. I do, yes, I think rituals can be fascinating. Um, and again, you can personalise them, make them work for you. You don't have to have fancy, poetic, rhyming corticals and circle castings. You can use what, words that come off the top of your head. You can use simple, literal, I cast this circle to keep negative energy out and to keep positive energy in. Boom, done, dusted. One line, and that's your circle casting. The corticals can be the same as well. Um, it could be, I invite the element of earth in to bring stability. Welcome. You know, it don't make it more complicated than it has to be. You can make it 
very beautifully and poetic. Um, again, it depends on the person you are and what you like to work with. But if you're just starting out, keep it simple. Um, it's the intent at the end of the day. Um, it has to work for you and it has to be your, you have to feel it. So make it work for you. Uh, never a chore. Vanessa, thank you, lovely. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's ritual really. Um, it can, if you want uh, examples of rituals, there are quite a lot on the Kitchen Witch blog. There's quite a lot of rituals for solitaries, uh, particularly for the different Sabbaths. Uh, I think there's a couple of moon ones as well and a protection one. So if you want some ideas of scripts, um, well, obviously you could buy the book. <laughs> um, but there are lots of solitary rituals listed on the Kitchen Witch um, blog page written by the lovely kitchen witch bossy uh, maria it's what it means to you absolutely uh, christine when i first started doing my own rituals i used to apologize before i started if i got it wrong <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> i love it before i start if i get it wrong i'm sorry <laughs> yeah ideal <laughs> but they don't mind i think it's the, it's the point is that you've made the effort uh you know it is entirely up to you how you work it but do give it a try don't not do it because you're worried about getting it wrong um what it it's like anything if you practice you will get it right um same with spell working with anything really um doing it actually doing it is just so much better than reading it or you know watching someone else do it give it a try and see how you get on uh, Leslie, did you post the last ritual? Uh, I don't have no idea, Leslie. I will check with the posse. Um, but there are lots of rituals up there. And of course, we've got the Samhain coming up as well. Um, but do look on the Kitchen Witch blog because there's lots of suggestions there. And if you like the idea of ritual, but you don't like parts of it, change it. Make it work for you. Personalise it for you. Um, Maria, it's a disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of jail free card in case I make mistakes. So, you know, ritual might sound a bit scary, but if you break it down, it's got a basic structure and then you just make it work for you. So do do give it a try. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think, for today. Uh, it is a new moon. So if you want to do a new moon ritual, then now's the time. <laughs> um Eva, didn't see it posted. I'll make sure that it's posted, the uh, last one. Uh, Mitch, do you prefer doing ritual in groups or independently? Do you know, Mitch, I, I think I love the group ones. With Kitchen Witch, we do have such a fantastic team. Um, and I'll be honest here, whilst I am the high priestess of the Kitchen Witch Coven, it's the Kitchen Witch Ritual Posse that write all the rituals. I just have to rock up on the day with a box of cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and boss people about a bit um the team we've got right beautiful beautiful rituals but there is something very special about that energy of being in a group with people that you that you work so closely with um and we have such fun when we're doing it so yeah i do i do love the group rituals and even the ones we've been doing online as well we do get a nice special energy from it and that's made up of all you guys as well that join us um this is just the same as a ritual. It's the energy of the group that makes it a success. Um, but, you know, there is some bonus to doing rituals uh, on your own as well. Um, this is quite personal, isn't it, doing your own rituals? So I think there's pros and cons for both of them, really. But, yeah, I, I miss my kitchen witch bossy. So, yeah, it's lovely doing it with them. Teresa, this is so helpful, inspiring. Thank you for making rituals so accessible. Oh, bless you. I, you know, do it. Go for it. It should be. There are no, you know, there's nothing scary about it. Um, you have to just go for it. Um, thank you, Denise. You're very welcome. Christine, that was fun. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Yeah, you take care, Christine. Thank you for joining me. And thank you, Xenia. Never stop waffling. I don't think you'll ever shut me up, Xenia. <laughs> Uh, Leslie, I'm loving the ritual here. It's given me the chance to get involved. It is why we moved online, actually, with, with the situation at the moment. We've reached, we're able to, to join in ritual with people from across the globe when we do the live ones, which is fantastic. Um, 
Sylvie, that's what's missing in our area. So we'll do the rituals alone. Yeah, uh, they have a benefit as well. Doing your own rituals is very, very special, Sylvie. Uh, Eva, love your shawl and a gorgeous shawl pin. Thank you very much. Both were given to me by my mother, actually. Uh, Kelly, love our Friday mornings. Oh, bless you, Kelly. It is, you know, Eve, love the group rituals. Yeah, we have a laugh, Eve, don't we? <laughs> um, you have a great weekend too, Maria. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Um, Karen, thank you. It's good to know things go wrong for everyone. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've done a ritual yet where <laughs> everything's been perfect. Denise, when's the next live ritual? That's the Sawain one. That is Sunday, the 25th of October, the Samhain Ritual, 7 p.m. in the Kitchen Witch Facebook group. That is the next live one. If you look in the Kitchen Witch Facebook group in the events, you will see a link for it. And it tells you the supplies that you, you know, what's happening. I think actually for this one, all you need is an apple. So <laughs> um, thank you so much, everyone. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Tess. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Lexi. Um, my Friday mornings wouldn't be the same without you guys. This is as good as doing a ritual with the energy. It really is. Um, it's the highlight of my week. And you guys are absolutely fantastic. If you have any questions in the meantime, please do message me or pop a message on the Facebook Coven group. Uh, and otherwise, I will see you all next Friday morning. I'm off to make my son's birthday cake. Everyone have a fantastic day and a fab weekend.